Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlot with rawfoodhealth.net and today we're talking about Dr. Doug Graham. If you don't know him, he's the author of the 80-10-10 diet and he's one of the big fish in the very small pond of the raw food movement. And today uh, I want to address some of the criticism that has been going Doug's way because um, I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've been getting, I've gotten numerous emails on this topic over the years, but uh, more recently I've been getting more, um, specifically objecting to the fact that I've generally spoken well of Doug and people find this unreasonable. So uh, I got an email from uh, someone that I've worked with in the past and uh, he was basically saying the same thing. So I asked him if I could answer his question on YouTube. He said, yeah, but he didn't want his name used, so I'm going to just read the email and respond to it. He writes, Hi Andrew, I really love what you do. I've been following the directions you give in raw food weight loss and vitality, and my weight is down 20 pounds in three months. I really appreciate your program, your common sense videos and articles, and your science-based recommendations. They seem to really work. I think your attention to nutritional nuance is a breath of fresh air. But I was really surprised when I read the acknowledgement section of the book because you make a point of thanking Dr. Doug Graham who wrote 801010. I can't believe someone as level-headed as you would support a huckster like him. He killed a woman at his fasting facility due to his lack of care. Have you read 801010? It's the most poorly cited book I've ever read. It's a joke. And he also He's just gouging people and profiting from their ill health. He charges more than $11,000 for fasting in Costa Rica and 1000 for health and fitness week. Sick people shouldn't have to go bankrupt to find health. His program is also obviously not working for him. Have you looked at the man? His skin looks like that of an 80-year-old, and he's going bald. He's falling apart. Doug Graham is not the kind of guru that the raw food movement needs. His obsession with natural hygiene and lack of nutritional knowledge are making raw foodies like you look bad. Don't you think that you should be removing that thank you note? People like you should be calling out people like him for the frauds they are. So my first thought when reading something like that is, do these people know Doug? Do they, have they spent any significant amount of time with him? I know Doug reasonably well, I've spent a fair amount of time with him, and I am like, where is this coming from? Because this isn't really the Doug that I've spent time with. And uh, just to give you some perspective here, in 2004 my life was pretty much a living hell. Um, I had uh, radiating abdominal pain, I had blood and pus in my stools, I was usually constipated, I was bloated, I felt horrible, I was getting a weird relationship with food because it was painful to digest food. And uh, into that mix comes a little book by Doug Graham called Brain Damage, it's a little pamphlet this big. This was before 801010 ever came out. And uh, it basically said, eat fruit. And uh, I had been experimenting with various diets for a long time, but I had never considered that as the, my main fuel source. It was kind of new at that time. So I put that into effect and uh, a couple months later my colitis symptoms were gone. And my doctor told me I would never get rid of my colitis that had nothing to do with diet and hair was gone. It was one of the biggest things to ever happen to me. I was so happy. I cannot even explain how happy I was because I had been suffering a lot. And Doug is the guy who is responsible for fixing that for me. And if I had no other interactions with the man but reading that little pamphlet, I would be forever grateful. But it didn't end there. And, um, you know, when I had nutritional questions going down the road, I interacted with Doug, I emailed him, posted questions on his message board, which he still runs, by the way, and he gave me answers. He didn't ask any money. He just answered my questions. And I think that is indicative of the character of the man. He has been running that veg source message board, which from a marketing perspective probably isn't even the smartest move. He'd probably want to put that in his own website and uh, kind of more directly advertise his own services. But no, he's just doing that for free on somebody else's website because he wants to help people. And people ask him questions, he's answered thousands of them and he doesn't get any money from it. 
So I would say that, uh, I would say keep that in mind when you're passing judgment on them. So Doug does indeed make his living from trying to heal people, as I myself do. And he's frankly a lot better at it than I am. <laughs> and he, he does charge money for his events. It's like you said, about $1,000 to go to Health and Fitness Week. You're gonna pay closer to 12000 to go to fasting with Doug. And that's a lot of money, but I would ask you to consider that if you were to need, if you needed to go to the hospital and you had to take an ambulance to the hospital and then you got, say, stitches or something that just took a few minutes of care, you would probably have a bill that was over a thousand dollars. So we're not talking about a ridiculous sum of money for education and uh, immersion that could make a huge difference in your life. I've been to Health and Fitness Week and I found it fantastic and I fasted with Doug and I found that fantastic. So I understand people don't want to pay money, they want everything to be free, wouldn't it be nice? But um, I think his events are high quality and I think that if you think he's charging an unreasonable amount of money, you should think about how he could be much worse in the sense that, well I mean if I wanted to make money, money lots of money doing what I do, I wouldn't do what I'm doing to selling information and consulting with people. This is not the best way to do it. It would be much more profitable for me to just get people hooked on superfoods and supplements and things that they don't need. I would just lie to them. I would tell them, this is what you need. You should buy this stuff from me and you will have all your problems go away. And people fall for that. This is how most people in the health movement make their money. They don't sell information because it's a very low profit uh, area. And uh, Doug is in the same boat. He's not uh, wasting people's money on that kind of stuff. And I think that's, again, indicative of, of uh, you know, if he's, he's trying to gouge people, because he's obviously not. If you, as to Doug falling apart, I would, I would look at it a different way. Um, Doug is gonna, I think he turned 61 this year, and I'm a few months away from 30, so there's about a 30 year age gap in between us. Most people consider me to be pretty fit, and Doug is the only 61-year-old 60 man, or anyone even close to that age, who can keep up with me in a wide variety of athletic pursuits. Um, I mean, he's obviously not as fit as he was when he was perhaps, you know, in his 20s and 30s, but Doug is incredibly fit. He is the only 61-year-old guy who can do many of the things that I've seen him do. and. Are there, is there anyone else out there who can be as fit at 61? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't really met any of them. But the man is aging extremely well if your criteria for aging is good physical performance, good physical resiliency, and a sharp mind. And if you don't like how his skin looks, well, Doug will be the first one to tell you, you know, he spent too much time in the sun. He got burnt too much when he was younger. And, uh... As for, you know, he's, yeah, he's bald, but that's genetic. No one's figured out a way to prevent that with any dietary means. He's, he is what he is. I think that one of the issues here is you're looking for an ultimate paragon of aging, an ultimate paragon that just like, you're a guru. You can look up to him and find answers. The problem is the word guru. Don't look to people to be your leader. Get good ideas from someone and then run with them. As to him killing a woman at his fasting retreat, I met the partner of the woman who died and talked to her in 2009, and I didn't notice that she was mad at Doug, and it was noteworthy that I met her at one of Doug's events, and she wasn't mad enough to stay away. She didn't blame Doug to any large degree that I could tell. And also, the woman who died was a medical doctor. She knew what she was getting into, and she found she thought that it was the best option for her. So uh, she also did not die during the fast. She died uh, after the fast had ended, and she had a long-standing heart condition. Doug gets a lot of flack because people think that his recommendations are not necessarily in line with the latest and greatest in nutritional science, or the fact that he bases his arguments around natural hygiene. Uh, 
and if you pr prefer the particular emphases I give to some subjects, or if you think you found something that works better for you, some modification that works better, I'm so happy for you. I'm always telling people to experiment and find what works, but I would say don't forget your Isaac Newton. If we can see any farther at all, it's because we're standing on the shoulders of giants. In Doug Graham's work essentially paved the way for the modern raw food movement, and his teaching is still entirely relevant. I still eat the 80-10-10 diet. That's what I would call it. It's the 80-10-10 diet. And while I would say that a, a, a pure natural hygienist might balk at some of my stances, I consider myself to be highly influenced by natural hygiene, and it's the basis of what I do with my own life. It works. It is incredibly effective. You are correct in noting that we do have some small differences. Um, I, there are some small nutritional issues where I don't really see eye to eye on them, and for things like we've had a, a lengthy email exchange about the timeline of man's dietary evolution and when things were introduced to our diet and how that affected our anatomy, but really, these are incredibly minor issues that don't amount to much. Doug's diet, his suggestions to people are spot on, and there's little to criticize there. And so no, I will not be renouncing my fondness for Doug. In fact, I'm going to re-emphasize it. Doug rocks. He is more correct about more subject matters than virtually anyone else in the, else in the field of health that I'm aware of. 